Jesus Christ said. Mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20. Mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20. Jesus Christ said. Especially the last verses. 17, 16, 17, 18, 19. He said it. These signs they shall follow. Who? Who follow? You know who? In today's era, pastors. Pastors in the churches. Especially those born again and TV evangelists or church goers or Bible thumpers, hot gospelers, all are here lumped up in this category. And these signs they shall follow. In my name, they will cast out devils. Many pastors in Pakistan, they do convention. I don't want to take their names. I never like to take their names. They do these things. In the name of Jesus, heal. The guy get healed. In the name of Jesus, something happened. The guy, the guy is deaf. The guy is born blind. He has leprosy. He has many, any kind of disease. He has ALS. He has, you know, this, uh, what you call, cerebral palsy. Any disease he has. In the name of Jesus, done. The job is done. You see, I wonder why these uh, pastors don't go to hospitals. They are sick people, dying people, on their deathbed, bedridden people for so long of paralysis. Go to them and heal them in the name of Jesus. No, this drama will only be enacted in the churches. Paid actors, cheap apologetics and cheap uh, what you call this old drama cheap uh, scenes cheap script cheap direction cheap production that's the best in it but what jesus said these signs they shall follow in my name they cast out devils all of these pastors they do this thing because it's easy it costs you nothing in the name of jesus in the name of jesus do it so far so good Continue. The verse continues. In my name they cast out devils. You cast out devils. In, in my name they will heal the people. Heal the people. They will speak many foreign tongues. They will speak many different languages. In my previous talk I told you in Pakistan. Leave about foreign languages. These pastors cannot speak their own mother tongue. Not mother's tongues. Their own mother tongues, the language they learned from childhood. You know that? Vowels. They do not know it is the what word we have to say through the right vowels in Urdu. Diction, intonation, pronunciation, articulation, dialect. All are gibberish. By God, I'm telling you, meet any of them. I have not come across a single pastor who is so much have DDs and doctors of dignity or whatsoever in Pakistan whose diction is correct in language. What foreign language is you going to speak? Nothing. You watch in Pakistan, they bring translators. Why you need translators in conventions? Jesus said that they will speak many tongues. The who? The whom? Who's who? They're talking about who people? Which people? The people who follow signs in them, meaning the who say that we are the follower of Jesus. These signs must be dwelled in them. What is that? I will tell you. Number one, they will heal in my name. They will cast out devils in my name. These two tasks, easy. Everybody does it. Third one. They will speak many foreign tongues. I say, which pastor speaks English in Pakistan? Which pastor speaks? Speak English at least properly. The language of your Bible. The translator slaves you are. The translator of the translation, you use it in your Bible and you talk about Quran. You do, do, do blasphemy against Quran. But you are very clever to do blasphemy against Quran, but you never talk on your own. You don't know how to read your own Bible in English. You are the slave of a translation of the translation of the translation. The, the Bible you are carrying in Urdu is basically the vernacular coming from King James Version. 
and same as revised standard version translated into Urdu. This is the thing. So how many languages you speak? Not your own mother tongue properly. Then, here is the problem comes. Jesus says, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. It will not harm them. It will not hurt them. I say, why pastor don't follow this? Why you have a hypocritical idea that the first part you follow it. In my name, they cast devils. You say, look, Jesus gave a sign. We are doing it. But you fail in the second of the tongues. You don't know how to speak different languages. And the third, you never take a deadly poison. Then the smart Christian comes and says that, no, don't tempt God, don't tempt providence. Very clever. Your God gave you this test. If God has given you test, then it's not tempting God. Temptation comes if somebody else gives you the test to do something against Allah, against God, to check him. Like if some clever Muslim or smart Muslim comes and say that, Okay, okay, fine. If you want to believe in that, to do this thing. And let's see, God is protecting you or not. This is tempting. This is tempting providence. But that is not tempting providence because your God gave you this test. When God gave you this test, then it must be fulfilled for the complacency of the people. And if you are not fulfilling it, then it means it's a cheat. It means you are a liar. You are making a lie because Jesus says four things, you must do it. And these signs they shall follow in them, you'll see in them. I don't see signs. I only see in the name of Jesus, you are doing this whole melodrama. I see that in the, what you call, might you can speak few languages. I could, you can convince me in that point too. But you are failed to convince me to take any deadly thing. You know, there was a debate long time in Scandinavia, in Sweden, Scandinavian countries. Sheikh Ahmad Didar Rahimullah, he did with uh, Stanley Schobert, Sh something like that, I don't know, I forgot the name of that pastor. The guy gave him the poison is there and he was shivering. So his faith, you know, went away with his, all these, uh, you know, idiosyncrasy. He ought to fulfill that, but he, you know, the way he sheepishly, he changed the game and changed, turned the table, looked the drama he enacted and played. Now, you know, I see a devil in him. Why devil in him? When Jesus gave you the test, you didn't say that. I see devil in him. Astaghfirullah in Jesus. But you say that that guy, the one who brings you to do the test, I see devil in him. Very good way out. Fulfill the test. Then show us these conventions in Pakistan. If you show us these four tests, then talk to us and tell us what Jesus said. Well, how did Jesus did this and that? You make mockery of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by saying what miracle Prophet Muhammad did. Yes, this is your main idea about all the Muslims. You, you have only this sale point to tell Muslim what miracles Prophet did. Quran is our miracle. Do you have any standing miracle? No. The, teacher, the test Jesus gave you, you do you never fulfill. No pastor ever fulfilled that. Only you take half the test because it gives you donation, money. I always say you. I always say that the best business is to open a church and you watch. Play with the people's emotions. Jesus is coming anytime. Anytime he's coming. People get, you know, worked up in frenzy, in ecstasy, in euphoria. All overwhelming people coming, droves after droves. To do what? Nothing. All in vain. Damn squib. This is what I'm always telling. If you want to reason on the real grounds, you have no case. I have a solution for you. I can help you. You see, if you read Revised Standard Version of the Bible, 1948 or 1952, they removed these verses. You know that? They removed Mark chapter 16, verse number 9 to 20 as a fabrication, interpolation, concoction, adulteration. They said it. On, in original ancient manuscripts, we do not find these verses. These are assumed to Jesus Christ. These are put to Jesus Christ. He never uttered those words. I said, 
Congratulations, you Christian, you pastor, you should listen Revised Standard Version. It will protect you from this test. The test and acid test Jesus gave you. Please. That is why we're telling you the Bible is not the word, is not the God's word, the word of God. If it was so, one jot and one tittle shall no means pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. Jesus Christ said, till the heavens and the earth shall pass away, one jot, one, you know, speck should not be changed from the law until all be fulfilled. Whosoever removes, your New Testament says, Paul, book of Corinthians, whosoever removes or whosoever adds or subtracts anything from the word of God, plague be upon unto them. So what are you doing? You removed it. 9 to 20 mark chapter 16 and then you said that is still the word of god some vegetables of thapsus you said it's the footnote of that guy which came into the text so when it came into the text then remove it and you removed it same one epistle of john chapter 5 verse 7 removed luke chapter 24 verse 51 removed all these things are removed in your bible and then restored back again all these things think if you say no those pastors were shoemakers those you know 50 cooperating denominations were shoemakers those people who did this revised standard version the editors then please fulfill mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20 your game will up